word. It's the Maxi Talk. So, hello and welcome to another episode of the B-Side Word. Today we have a special episode. It's an off-the-cuff episode with me, Maxi. And today our guest is the one and only Jimmy Westerheim, who is my my boss, my friend, my all sorts <laughs> of things. Everything? Are you going to say My gym that? partner, lots of things. But Melody is going to be upset, you know? Melody is going to be jealous if you say my everything now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been... Uh, well, do you want to just introduce yourself quickly? <laughs> I can do that. And then I, w- I want to find out why it's called the B-side word, by the way, and not the A-side or C-side. But we'll get to that. We'll, yeah, we'll get to that. It's easy uh, answer. <laughs> Um, My name is uh, Jimmy Westerheim, as Mm -hmm. you said, and I am the founder of The Human Aspects, where Mm -hmm. we are so grateful to have you as part of our journey. Mm -hmm. Um, Before that, my story, as you know, is a little bit long and tricky, but I was in top-level sports uh, myself. I've been a personal advisor and trainer and uh, kind of following top athletes. I worked in international shipping uh, for seven years around the world for what was then the biggest uh, group in the world. I worked for Doctors Without Borders uh, around the world in Afghanistan, Syria and and other places. And I started the human aspect in 2016. And of course, I've been uh, a mentor and a speaker, a public speaker for Mm. quite a while. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's the short version. I'm from the countryside yeah. in Norway, which is, of course... So this is like, this part. almost feels like too serious already for the B-side word. <laughs> Normally we're just jumping in, we're talking about why some nurses, I don't know, like slipped over or what, some silly stuff. Like what today, one of the questions we had today on the podcast, so this is happening after our normal podcast, was about um, um, like, is maths even real? For an example, of the is type maxi of stuff. real? No, it's maths, mathematics. Maths is, is real. really real. Yeah. So we, we sometimes dive into serious, serious <clears throat> conversations. So you're a very, how would you say it? Like a put together guy. So I'm going to try and fluff up the mood a little bit and get mm-hmm. your opinion on some things which you might not normally talk about on a podcast. But one thing that is a bit more serious where we will start is um, you're an expert in mental health, I guess you can say, um, with, with what we do at The Human Aspect. Um, and essentially the human aspect is a platform where we share uh, life experiences from of different people from all around the world and these experiences if you've been through a similar one you can log on to our platform and, and learn from them that's the essence of it and there's so much more we're building around that now yes yeah was just, is that a fair way to put it plus minus plus minus without going too much into it <laughs> yeah yeah um so so from that we know someone that's led that for the last three to four years we can we can call you an expert uh I will allow myself to have that. Title you will be an expert in mental health, right? yes. or at least, especially like especially the systems around it. Yeah. So one thing we spoke about today, which made me trigger a little bit, was um, on there was a Reddit article which said what is um, different in third world countries. I think it said it was someone from America wrote the title that said, um, "If you're from a third world country, can you write down something that you have to put up with that we just take completely for granted or wouldn't be able to handle in the first world?" Um, there was one thing we thought was really funny, which was in Nicaragua. Mm. Have you ever been there? No. So mm. they don't use addresses. Yeah. So when you go there, they just explain it like it's over the hill towards where the sun sets and 500 meters or blah, blah, blah. But one thing I wanted uh, to hear from you now was um, what's your like, I know you've been a lot of traveling and stuff. And if we talk about the mental health side of things, like how do you see sort of the quirks or the differences in third world countries compared to what most of our listeners a very happy like in their little bubble country. today yeah i guess you know the the standard answer is maslow's hierarchy of needs right so if mm-hmm. you're in a so-called third world country they would be worried about security about food about the very simple things that most of us take for granted in the sense that we have it mm-hmm. so it's not necessarily that we're not grateful for it it's just that we have it so why mm-hmm. should we wake up every day being grateful for being able to go to the supermarket right it, yeah. for some people it doesn't make sense and that's not the core of it either but when it comes to mental health one of the challenges that i saw working with refugees for example like mm-hmm. coming from horrid contexts of, of war right especially in syria mm-hmm. the fresh war so it wasn't like in afghanistan or other places where it's been for decades this was new mm-hmm. and for all of them you would say that they're all in mental health distress obviously yeah. they've been through things we can't even imagine yeah but when they are in it they seem to be able to deal great with it it's this is panic mode survival mode but when they come into the refugee camp mm. 
where all the needs in Maslow are met. They're given food, they're yeah. given shelter, they're given medical treatment, they're mm. given security uh, compared to where they're coming from in, in war. And that's where you suddenly see a, an explosion in mental health. Okay, yeah. So it seems like our human kind of survival mode doesn't allow what we see as mental health challenges. And now I'm talking about the more common ones, anxiety mm. and depression that mm. we are struggling with in modern world countries, right? And yeah. loneliness, for example. Yeah. Those are not accepted in the human mind, it seems like, before those are met. It's almost like you, so your energy is being used for those basic needs first. Yes. Before you even have time to think about whether you feel yeah. depressed or anxious. or Which makes the fascinating element of is it even possible to develop depression in that context? Yeah, so like the interesting thing there is then, like, so we always talk about how us as a first world country can teach them something. Them something, because we got it all together, right? Like we have supermarkets which uh, have <clears throat> aisles of toothpaste and food mm -hmm. and everything's organized and like our school system's perfect. But actually, when it comes to sort of those higher things in the pyramid, which is, do you know what they are? Like the... Self appreciation and self yeah. uh, some assertion and yeah and so of course things that goes to and there's a new one on top there now which is basically being happy in your own life basically okay. it's the purpose focus which is a new one Maslow didn't do that he he's he's passed away but but that's interesting because you would think we focus on that more here because we've got yes. the other ones tick covered like, yeah. But despite the fact we focus on it more, we seem to be struggling with it more. Yes, because we have space for it. Imagine so we have space in to your struggle. life, you are safe, you have food, you have a job. Mm. There is nothing for you to worry about. And now I'm talking in the bigger picture, mm. obviously. Of course, there's still cancer, there's still accidents, there's still war and crime and you know, mm. all kinds of bad things. But in general, yeah. most of us don't have anything really life-threatening to worry about. Yeah. And then we start thinking about other things. Then in our mind, there is space for what do I want? Mm. And this is where things start to get complicated, right? Yeah. Because now you're like, oh, I don't like that girlfriend. She's not good enough. Or oh, not that job is great. I'm a lawyer. I'm an engineer. But do I like my colleagues? Yeah. Do I like that I have to travel an hour every day? And we start thinking about things that for them doesn't even exist. It's so, like there's no space. So the for suggestion that. is to live more dangerously. So you, you <laughs> to knock out the bottom pillars. No. Will that solve the problem? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> no, it's, it's more that when this has come, mm. where it's new, like yeah. in in age of time, this is new. Like and it never, yeah, probably, we've never been like this before. Like, no. And there we see. If you combine that with mm. an expectation that it's not allowed to struggle mm. because the new generation are brought up in the way that you have nothing to complain about because shit is better than when I grew up, right? Mm. That's your parents' talk or your grandfather's talk. So then you're not accepted to say that this is difficult, that yeah. all these new thoughts that your grandparents didn't have, not because you're better or worse than they are, it's just because the world is different. Yeah. Now suddenly we are not allowing them to deal with it. And in the same way that they did, we don't have knowledge. And the fascinating part is, uh, we actually spoke to a high level politician yesterday in a meeting, one of the highest in, in the country. And he said, but I guess stigma is, is better now. And I challenged him on that and I said, yes, for my generation it mm. is because we're in the middle. So we have realized that, yeah, we can talk about these things. Mm. But for the newer generation, they are not allowed to struggle. Yeah. So for them, it's actually as stigmatized as it is for my parents. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Something has gone wrong here in the sense that they don't think that they can fail because they have so much pressure to succeed because everything in Maslow is covered. Yeah. There's no reason why you should not succeed at all. There's no excuse. That's this crazy. So when you think about like the history of time, when we, apart from kings and queens, and they're also under threat, I mean, they could just, it was very normal to lose your kid. Like yes. most kids, is it sort of one in three kids would die like only 200 years ago since Which before? Which is still in Afghanistan, for example. Yeah, so, that, so today that still happens around the world, but then mm. it's only been the last hundred years ish where yep. in first world countries there's been that many people that's been afforded the opportunity to focus on that part of the pyramid yep. 
which means it's completely new to us as humans to read. So the idea that someone has a right answer is a bit like, well, based on what? Like everything's almost. Is there Which anything is why out we there? Love it. Yeah, you know, but that's also why we can. You know, you said okay, you're calling yourself an expert. So to put this in context means I'm not educated, right? Yeah. So that's why we were yeah. battling if we should call me an expert or not. Which kind of makes us a more interesting expert mm. than the professionals. The professionals are trained in a theory that was written. 100 to 200 years ago plus new science on top of that yeah 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 but in the end we potentially more know not necessarily more about it but as much about it because we read the same science mm. and we have interviewed hundreds of people mm. so we start to see the potential answer which for me is that if we now manage to give people number one understand that challenges is part of life and that it's something positive mm -hmm. this is where we humans grow will smith said this in an interview he said that i potentially fail as a father because i'm taking away all the things from Jaden's life yeah that i grew on yeah so suddenly so he's, a fine he's, line he's somewhere twiddled. With, he yeah. was like, should I throw him back to where I grew up in Philly? Yeah. And he was like, he would die. So no, I'm not <laughs> going to do that. But at the same time, that's a baffling question, right? Yeah. Are you failing as yeah. a parent because you're doing everything that you were taught to do, which is protect them? But that's like, I guess that's, but there's a bit of a paradox there because obviously by giving him all those, that stability mm. and security and everything else, he's still going to have challenges. For sure. And he's, yeah. now comes the tricky part. Yeah. Because youth today arguably, has been shielded so much from the challenges that you and I had mm. that when they meet that challenge, that is going to come because yeah. you're absolutely right. They don't have the resilience nor the tools because no one taught them to meet that challenge. And that's why we see a spike in youth suicides mm. because it makes no sense in an objective yeah. constant and I was there when I was 13 I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. wanted to, to kill myself so I kind of know the mindset there's no objective reason for why this kid kids today in mm. modern countries should think that it's better to die than to live in today's society Yeah. well when you so, say there's no so this is there's no objective reason like for myself based, I can on, use my based on what we know about psychology the world. today and the world today about the world because, because there must be an objective reason in the sense of there's something that's doing it it's subjective that's that's the tricky part because they think that now that i met this challenge yeah i can't talk about it yeah i have completely failed at yeah. life and like i thought when i was 13 i'm just in the way the world okay, will be so better off so without the, me okay i got what you're saying so the reason like so the reason in itself really that reason on its own because i've been bullied at school or because mm. I feel like I can't talk about a certain area of my life and no one understands me. That reason on its own objectively doesn't seem like a big thing. Exactly. Because if, your because your you parents go, if you go down it, to Syria or somewhere where they're struggling, they could not give two... No, even closer. Like yeah. your dad, Dave, right? Yeah. If you gave him the context of today's uh, kids, mm -hmm. right? And you would give it to your dad, he would look at you and be like, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where's the challenge? Yeah. <laughs> give yeah. it to me, right? Okay. Not not to be, he wouldn't mean to be mean. And it's mm. not that it's not real problems, it is. But because you haven't been taught any of the tools up mm. to that point, that challenge in your life subjectively is so big that now you don't want to live anymore. But yeah. if your dad faced that same challenge at the same age, yeah. he would be like, just another day yeah. in uh, So my dad's got me on that one. But I mean, when my dad's challenged by the computer, I'm better at dealing with those challenges than him. Yes. So it's not all. It's not all. No, but that's what I mean. This is a paradox. Yeah. That because <laughs> and the only way to fight it, in my mind, yeah, is knowledge. We need to give people knowledge, knowledge. like we do in the human aspect. Yeah. That challenges are normal. Mm. You grow on them, and in the end, when you're through, those are the things you look back on and say, "That happened to me. I am proud of it. Now I am here." Yeah. And the same in, in sports, right? If you see in sports, then you should think very simply that, for example, in Premier League, they did a test mm -hmm. and they saw how many came from uh, good households and okay. how many came from struggling households. This is interesting. And yeah. it was more than 93% or something of professionals in Premier League mm -hmm. that came from struggling households. 
Kaká. Do you know the Kaká, yeah. the, the famous yeah, Brazilian? Yeah, yeah. He's one of the few ever professionals to have won a big title. And that has been given the golden uh, golden, golden ball, yeah. yeah. Ballon d'Or. That what? comes from what is considered to be a privileged background. I did not even know he was from a privileged background. But yeah, Kaka. he's one of the very few. Huh. And that goes That's to the same context, is that when these kids coming from a privileged background mm. face the severity and the, the challenge of, of being a Premier League and succeeding in being a Premier League player... Mm. It is so, yeah, they they, they don't it. handle the pressure mm. over time, so that's arguably the same in, in that sense for yeah. net. So just you. let them in. Yeah. I didn't have their number, so I couldn't tell them that. All right, nice. I could hang out for ten minutes. This was interesting. It it's is going to be a part two of this. I'm just telling you. Already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So the last thing we spoke about was the Premier League football players and how the ones that made it yeah. from ninety three percent, you say? Or something I don't remember, but you, we can Google it. But it was above ninety. Yeah. I'd love to jump into those numbers. That's uh, and then also to like get a representation of like across all sports because like some sports are more working class. Oh, it's, and it's the same. Yeah. Like so like if you check Michael Phelps, Usain Bolt, all yeah, of them come from those sort of because that's like all the. So you're saying that's when they get to that point in their life or they get to that point in the career where now it's not just about being your local area anymore it's about hmm? those challenges and those knockbacks of injuries and all those things that can stop you from getting there the ones that have had a, like a you hard upbringing a deeper motivation that had those challenges and understand what it's like not to have those opportunities hmm? then they take them it's it's the theory of 10,000 hours right mm. um, I guess most people have heard the theory of 10,000 hours you mm. will turn into an expert this comes from yeah. music and sports yeah so, for me, for example, I had challenges starting when I was one years old, even though I didn't, or when I was born, my yeah. dad wasn't there. Yeah. And I've had so much training in dealing with, let's call it, grown-up conversation, where I was yeah, allowed yeah. to be part of it. I was six years old, where my, my mom told me about that I had another dad, because then yeah. I had a stepdad that yeah. I thought was my dad. So, yeah, yeah. Surprise, surprise, you know, he's not. Mm -hmm. There's another one. <laughs> and she was like, do you want to meet him? Mm. six years old you know that's pretty <laughs> what you say? choice to give to kid <laughs> to be honest i was thinking you know more uh, christmas gifts oh, double double the presents <laughs> exactly that's so exactly i was like what of I course thought, i want to meet him i want to charm his ass so i can my get dad some... left when i was five well didn't leave he went down the road when yeah. i was five but that meant double christmas gifts exactly it was a positive thing for me <laughs> exactly it was for me as well so i was like hey hey and yeah. i have a new a big brother i always <laughs> wanted that and i was like this is great in the beginning, obviously, it turned out yeah. to be a challenge as well. But So the whole point of that is when you have close to zero mm -hmm. hours of those 10,000 that you need in to... handling life yes. psychologically yes. and yes. you meet yes. Yes. a top challenge, that mm -hmm. is the same as if I took a random person that has never played football in their life mm -hmm. and I put them in a professional Premier League game. And yeah. I said, compete. Good luck. Yeah. How do you think that would go mentally? Not very well. It would break down. Not very well. That's awesome though, because I feel like especially now, in sort of the time we live in now, where it is so if you have you met Leo Beals, my friend? Maybe not. Like no. I'm gonna put his name out there now. Like he's someone that I remember I had a conversation with him recently and he was talking about he's in these meetings, he's doing really well in his career at the moment, and he's at these high level meetings, but because he's that guy from Grinsbury, a place in Banbury, like a poor area, he doesn't feel like he should be there. Mm. But what I was trying to explain to him is he has something which most of those people in that room don't have, which is what you're talking about. So it may be he doesn't have the knowledge in that area specifically, but he's going, he's studying it, he's doing a degree, so he's going to get that. But what he does have, which they can't just go to a degree, go to university to get a degree in, is that challenges in life mm -hmm. and that toughness and experience, you know, coming from overcoming those challenges. All of a sudden, he's in a much better position then. Mm -hmm. So it's just like opens that door for so many more people today to say, you know, you've do all these things like these challenges. Uh, actually, if you Good. want to become a high performer, you want to do lots of things. Is uh, is actually uh, like a blessing a good in disguise. Thing. And there comes the tricky part, right? Because that's a good storyline to give to the people that are struggling, right? Mm. This is how you establish hope. Yeah. So that's the classical. I saw someone from my hood. I'm living in a shitty hood, and I saw them become. Yeah. a rapper or a professional footballer. That's why those people, the success stories from these areas 
can change an entire community mm. because it just installs hope in these kids mm. and suddenly they perform better in school you know there's a lot of science on that that the little places where for example Mario Sané from Liverpool the mm. area he came from like when he succeeded and when he became a professional like his entire community started yeah. performing better it's there's some yeah, uh, research why Jamaicans that. are so good at sprinting it's not DNA it's because they have a community that exactly. have hope from sprinting yeah, yeah. And the challenge of that is that that part is great. Let's install hope in all the people struggling. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. They need it and they will perform better. But what about all the people that are born in our context? Mm -hmm. Plus mine is great. Mm -hmm. Like I'm born in the probably the luckiest country on the planet in Mm -hmm. Norway, even though I had my struggles. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have those struggles, I wouldn't be who I am today. So... I've come to a situation now where it potentially can seem like that the dad that I was told I had Mm. isn't my dad, potentially, right? Oh, wow. Okay. So I have been faced with the the choice of would you change it, right? So if I knew it was the other guy, Mm. would I have changed it? Because it would have completely transformed my life. It means that all the alcoholism, all the psychological abuse, all the misery, all the feeling of not being good enough that has fueled my entire life Mm -hmm. up till I was 27 would disappear. And I would uh, have a completely different childhood and I would probably be a completely different human being. So if you could have changed that back then, you mean? Like, so now the I it's a real question in my life. You know, I can't mm. change it. I can't travel yeah, can't back in time. You can change the but, process, but you can. But you can, in theory, it will still change the story. Yeah, because change your my, perception on the story. Yeah, but even the story. My story was. My dad, is an alcoholic, and I, he changes personality when he drinks, and he turns into this completely. Um, responsible less person who mm. doesn't take responsibility mm. and I'm scared that that will happen to me that was my Therefore, truth and you would never drink or and I have 50% of his blood in me so yeah. I am perceptive to that happening to me okay. but what if that wasn't the case go get drunk <laughs> for example <laughs> right but the whole point is then it changed it, yeah. it will literally change part of my story yeah, but cause... would I have wanted to change it no is the answer yeah. because I wouldn't have the resilience. I wouldn't have the abilities. Mm. I wouldn't have taken the shipping job. I wouldn't have gone to yeah. to Afghanistan and all of that. I, I would be, in my mind, I would be a lesser human. Okay. I will be that harsh wow. to say. Because I would have been deprived of the things that makes me who I am today. And... How do you deal with that fact if you are a parent mm. in what is considered to be a successful household that they they have worked hard for? Mm. Like Will and Pinkita Smith, right? So it's mm-hmm. Will Smith's dilemma. Yeah. So The Will Smith dilemma. That's what we exactly. can refer to it from now on. Which is obviously out there. But for you yeah, and me, no, for sure. like if we had kids now... Yeah, no, for sure. I've... What would we do? Would we then just give them a couple of books about mental health and hope that it will be okay be or boxing from a young age i guess one example of <laughs> get punched in the face yeah that feels <laughs> but yeah for sure you have to expose them to that stuff like uh, maybe i forget to pick my kids up from school a few times my dad did that to me and i had to walk a few miles home that was annoying exactly but maybe that's why i'm a, that. such an amazing person right now I don't... but they're taking away a lot of things right yeah. so maybe no, sure. as a parent we should look at society and i don't know if you've seen a Forget playground it. lately yeah. Playground. I come from the countryside, so yeah. my playground was the woods. You know, yeah. I have broken and cut now just, like everything of yeah. me. And now there is rubber in the playground. So basically, if you fall off the roof of the playground today, you will almost bounce back up. Right? It's like. But doesn't that just mean you jump from higher now as a kid? No, it just oh. means that they're, it seems like they're scared, right? Yeah. It's like our parents even ruined the playground. Yeah. There's a reason why you should. You want hurt a rusty, yourself. rusty old swing that you might get. What's that disease called when you get rust in your Exactly. Yeah. But because the problem of this is that kids don't understand limits. So when you never fall off anything, mm. you're not scared of it. Yeah. If you're not scared, 
you were, for example, and that's very easy to visualize before. physically. But I guess the big challenge for us now is that mental side of it, like mm-hmm. the mental limits that the kids don't go through nowadays. They have no resistance. And even like nowadays, like, I think I was part of that as well. I mean, I was sheltered from a lot of stuff that I know my parents went through. So there's mental it's limits. Which... We will use you as a test example yeah. because <clears throat> I know you now. Number one, if we took away your psoriasis yes. and we moved you into an area where your dad wasn't semi well known. Mm-hmm. So you would just be that mixed kid growing up in the UK that didn't have psoriasis. So <clears throat> now you're just completely different person, right? You yeah. you don't have the shield of your dad being mixed and fairly famous, which yeah. means that you would get more racism, I would assume, in your life. But at the same time, you're a very handsome guy. You're athletic. Yeah, that's true. That's all you're true. You're smart. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and you're successful in the sense that uh, young and successful, right? Yeah. So if we took away only the psoriasis challenge in itself... Mm. I'm a hundred percent sure that yeah. you would be a less empathic person. Hmm. You would still be really cool. You would be great, uh, but you would be more still be of handsome. the. You would still be handsome, yeah. but yeah. you would be more of that part of Maxi. Yeah, for sure. The cocky okay. side of Maxi. Yeah, yeah that yeah. I also like. Yeah, but well, good. The reason like why yeah. I really <laughs> like you is because you're complex. You're both the cocky, cool guy, yeah. smart guy that knows you're smart and knows you yeah, and yeah. use this well, but you're also super empathic and caring in the same person yeah so you're more complex because you have to explore those areas exactly. right and that happens from challenges yes so that has happened because you are the way you are and because your parents split and because of all the yeah. things that you've gone through i guess I that's, would argue. that's where we can try and end then is just say to our listeners as well like this has been awesome and we'll try and do it again yeah because there's so Don't many other areas away from to, your challenges uh, so many other areas i want to go into is yeah like maybe reflect on your life now and say all those things you hated so much mm-hmm. Just ask yourself, how have they actually built on who you are today? Why are you better for them? Yes, because that's part question number three, right? In the human yeah. aspect, we ask you, what has been your life's toughest challenge? Everybody can answer that. How did you overcome it? Everybody can answer that. But when I did my TED Talk in Portugal, I had calculated how many people never asked themselves question three. Mm. What did you learn? And it was only 7% of the people, it was 400 then, I think, that we had interviewed that had ever asked themselves mm. that question. What have you learned? Which means you have went through the challenge, you've gone through the shit, mm. and then you have left the shit mm. without the one thing that can make all of it worth it. And that's the lesson. Yeah. So you have done that one thing that you shouldn't do, and let's leave that behind. So if you now, in modern day of life, to be able to succeed on the top of Maslow's pyramid, Mm. we would allow challenges to come, Mm. we would be in them, and we would actually be able to, in them, realize that I am actually lucky now because I'm in a challenge. I am growing. Corona is here. It's shitty. We can't travel. You can't see your family as much. Mm. All the things. But we are learning now. We are adapting. We have to do new things. We have mm. to find new ways. The human aspect has grown more in the last six months than the two years before that. Not because we were lazy, not because we were lucky or because mm. the corona is great for us, not yeah. at all. But because we as a team decided that this challenge, we're going to grab it with both hands, yeah. and make something out of it, which is, you could do that in your own life. Well, so as always, I have a, 10 minute conversation with you and I feel inspired I'm hoping now this translates <laughs> to the listeners at home um, I was going to ask you for your final words that seemed like a good good final word is there anything else you want to add? <laughs> uh, no but also accept that now it sounds like I meet every challenge and I'm this like super dude yeah. and I'm like reflective like and there's no tomorrow that's not the truth yeah. I'm just saying that when a challenge is there allow those moments of feeling that this is actually something that it can come something good out of yeah I'm not telling the mother of someone that lost their child that uh, it was meant to be because that, that's, that's bullshit yeah. in my mind. Yeah. But it can turn out to be something that you can bring something positive out of. Yeah. The one we just interviewed before this, uh, her husband uh, killed himself and they had two kids. Like, what's the meaning of that? Nothing. Mm. But now she could literally say that that had made me into a better human. Yeah. 
because she has had to go through these challenges. She's a better mother, she said. Now she found love again. She's mm. a better... And now she's a professional working with that. You know, so mm. all the things that came out of losing that uh, wonderful man mm. turned her into a better human being. Yeah. You don't have to pretend you wouldn't change it either. But nope. it's happened. There's one thing you can do once it's happened mm -hmm. and just make the best of it. Exactly. That's plus minus exactly how we want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for inviting me. No, thank you. What, uh, on social media and stuff, how would we find you? I am actually so weird that I'm the only human being on this planet Earth yes. that has my two names. So I'm Jimmy Westerheim with a W and there's only one on LinkedIn, only one on Facebook and only one on Instagram. Perfect. I'll put that in the show notes as well so people can find that. And, and the human then, aspect, of course. Yeah, then the human aspect everywhere at the human aspect. And check out the human aspect podcast as well, because there you and I have been hosts. Yeah, that's true. So if you want to see me in another platform, which is more similar to what you heard today than what you hear on the B side, this Sorry is somewhere in between, then there's lots more <laughs> great information. And every time I'm inspired and every time I learn stuff, and that's one of the things we like to do in the B side is teach random things. Sometimes they're educated guesses. Sometimes it's uh, us making stuff up. But today it's been some good, hard, <laughs> cold facts, mostly. So um, Experience-based facts. But that's been us at The B-Side Word. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to follow us, we are at The B-Side Word on all platforms. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on all your podcast platforms. And we look forward to hearing you, or no, you hearing us next time. Mm -hmm.